My name is Sean Tracy, and I'm the Content and Technical Director for Star Citizen. We've been working on our characters, and more specifically, the facial aspect of this project for quite some time, so we're excited to finally reveal this to you. Here you can see Gary Oldman, Admiral Bishop, making his speech to the Senate. In terms of technology, we've built upon the already robust systems provided by the CryEngine, and have taken them a step further to really push the boundaries of what's possible in real time on PC. The high fidelity work that you're seeing on the facial skeleton, rig, and asset was done by 3Lateral, and really makes all of this possible. The animations you're seeing are made with an incredible attention to detail by Cubic Motion. My name is Vladimir Mastilovich, and I'm leading 3Lateral Studio. We start our process with high resolution scan data. These are scans of individually activated facial muscles, and basically each scan is consisted of several million triangles. This is a data set that cannot go efficiently in the engine. And each scan is a snapshot in time, and it doesn't have any correlation with any other scan. This is why we have written a tool that will analyze the surface of the skin and will find correspondences between each scan. Through this process, we're finding hundreds of thousands of correspondence points between each scan pair. And this enables us to produce blend shapes on any custom topology for these scans. Scans are then handled by our artists who are examining for any unwanted motion. And they are putting it in context and modeling a constellation of hundreds of shapes that will then be used to produce a facial rig which is essentially a digital puppet of the character, which can then be animated and transferred to a game engine as an optimized data set. When it comes to photoreal characters, everything is important. Not only that character itself needs to look correct in terms of its shape and its texture, but it also needs to look correct when it's animated. This also needs to extend to micro level, so that skin stretching and the pore stretching, the blood flow in the skin, and even a tiny layer of fluid between the eyelid and the eyeball behaves correctly so that it maintains the illusion of a live character in a scene. Essential for doing this on a such high volume project is not only having a large team, but also having proper production tools. Essential also to solving this problem are our production partners, Cubic Motion. At Cubic Motion, we're responsible for accurately recreating the actor's performances using the face rig designed by Trilateral. Stage one of the Cubic Motion facial animation process involves analyzing the actor's performance. So that means tracking hundreds of points on the face, covering all the main facial features, such as eyes, inner lips, teeth, and skin creases. In addition to that, we capture texture information from the video, and that gives us this extra level of fidelity in the data. After we have analyzed the performance, we move on to stage two in the process, and this means solving the data to the CG character's face rig. Every rig control has its own measure within the solver, and each of these measures looks at very specific regions of the face and how those regions move relative to another region. We can combine multiple measures, and what this means is that we can then accurately recreate realistic facial motion, like when you speak or when you emote. So let's take two examples of the solver in action. Firstly, we've got a funneling mouth shape, and this, is, this shape is essential for facial animation and lip sync. A second example would be the nuance that we can capture. So if you look in this demo video, what you can see uh, are very small eye twitches that are happening under the actor's skin almost. And you can see then inside of Maya that the solver has captured these and transferred the data across to the relevant control within the face rig. Once we have solved the data to all of the facial rig controls, we can then finalize the animation and then pass that data across to Cloud Imperium and they can integrate it into the game engine. The faces in Star Citizen utilize a combination of both blend shapes and bones to combine all the techniques available to us for real-time rendering. If I enable a debug overlay, you'll see a color-coded wireframe that indicates how many bone influences there are per vert. This is important as it gives us smoother and more realistic deformation. Recent updates to our technology allow us to compute this on the GPU, which means better performance and even more characters using it. At the same time, blend shapes are driven by the animation. Bishop uses over 400 of these blend shapes to accurately convey the actor's performance. We also use these shapes to apply the tangents to the mesh, meaning the shading is updated accurately as these shapes are blended in between. One more obvious addition is comprehensive support for animated diffuse, also called blood flow maps, as well as animated wrinkles. When used together, this yields a whole new level of facial performance.
You can see when I toggle the feature, the change is dramatic. There are even more subtle uses such as making the lips lighter when they stretch or darker when they purse. Where previous games on the CryEngine used a single wrinkle map texture, we have extended this to use one, two, or even three wrinkle and blood flow maps. This ends up giving us 44 different areas on the face to blend in diffuse and normals, making unique wrinkles and expressions as accurate as possible. You can get an idea of the complexity of this system through this debug view, where white highlights indicate the blend areas and their relative intensities. We've made other subtle improvements to add a bit more life to the eyes. One such improvement is dynamic pupil adaption, which causes the pupils to actually react to the changes in lighting. The animation for an asset of such quality can be heavy. Animating 200 bones and over 400 blend shape creates an enormous amount of data. We compress this on the way into the engine down from hundreds of megabytes to just a few. We do this compression very carefully as cubic motion has provided highly accurate and specific animation data of the actor's performance. This performance must be retained when coming into the engine. The facial pipeline within Star Citizen is well on its way, and as you can see, the characters push beyond where other projects and technologies have gone before. We are committed to delivering the most lifelike characters possible to enhance your immersion in the Star Citizen universe. <laughs>